Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. So this is in reply to a viewer who has said, what a waste it was. What a waste. And I guess um, I'm hoping that we can kind of change our thought processes. Was it really a waste? Um, look at it in the positive light. Uh, yes, we were hurt. We went through some things that were totally unnecessary, but we learned things. And we also learned that we're survivors that we're tougher than we thought we could be. Um, we learned that, you know, we have to really uh, look for red flags. Um, our emotions, I teach a class online uh, about what our emotions tell us, you know, whether we're uh, excited or angry, we're hurt. Um, when we're sad, it's our body telling us, um, you know, uh, what was important to us. So we know a, a true relationship or, um, you know, with a significant other or a, a true relationship with the parent, that's something that's important to us. So we can focus our lives around being better parents to our kids instead of looking uh, in the wrong direction. Um, you know, if, if our parents were abusive to us, we can learn that, our children don't deserve that. Or if you're with a significant other, that our boundaries are broken and we lost ourselves. So we learned that we're givers and uh, we learned that sometimes people take advantage of that and it can help prepare us for the future. Um, also, when we're lonely, you know, we feel a loss. And that's our body telling us that we need to reconnect with people. So it might not be our significant other or our parent, um, but it's our body telling us that we need some compassion, some time with other people. And it's a learning process. Uh, so I get where you guys are coming from. What a waste of time. What a waste of time. Um, you know, it's real hard on me. Uh, I want another child. And my second one... Um, kind of hemmed and hawed and procrastinated uh you know I was supposed to be back from Tennessee and it was like we barely ever saw each other and I wasted all my childbearing years you know we had a couple miscarriages um and that's gone and I have a lot of pain on that luckily I have a daughter from my first um narcissist but uh we learn what's important to us and you know I I'm a teacher so I have uh connections with children um it's a little different to me than having my own child but it's what's important to us and it's helping me reconnect uh, or deepen my relationship with my young niece um you know trying to spend time with my grandchildren and it's up to us how we focus our pain um how we respond to what our body's telling us um, you know, when we start getting sad, think about what makes us happy and go do some of those things. I love to go dancing. Um, I've taken tap, jazz, hip hop classes to fill that happiness. I like to go roller skating. I need to do it more. Um, finally got health insurance again. <laughs> so I, I break a lot. If you've watched some of my videos, I've had so many broken bones. Um, but was it a waste? Was it a waste? You know, we met some people, you know, uh, had some good times. Um, you know, I went on picnics with my exes. Uh, and not so much with my second one, but my first one, I met some really good people. And uh, some of them I'm still friends with. So we got some bonuses out of it. I've also had, you know, people turn on you. Uh, but that kept us from wasting time on who was really there for us. The ones that left us, whether it was a divorce or a breakup, were they true friends? My true friends that stuck around after the breakup, those were the true friends. And <clears throat> sorry, guys, I'm getting sick. But um, <clears throat> I, 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 I know the feeling of what a waste. Like I said, you know, I missed out on the childbearing years, um, trying to, you know, recover from miscarriages. Um, you get a void. And a lot of our lives are, are focused on filling these voids. And it's important to really um, 
see what's available to us. Are we trying to fill our voids with air or impossibilities? Um, we have to uh, refocus, uh, invest in the people that are really important to us. And that's when we're going to start to feel whole again. But the most important person is yourself. And during the abuse that we went through, sometimes we question, you know, am I worth it? Or was I not pretty enough or fit enough? Um, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. And you have to embrace who you are. And I've mentioned, you know, tell yourself some positive things. You know, they had this one video where the guy said, write down 10 things that are special about you. Feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear the things that you feel are special about yourself. But it, it can't do with looks. Um, what was the other one? I can't do with the things you do for other people. Um, just who you are. And there was another video or comment about asking somebody, who are you? Uh, you know, so you can be, I'm pretty, I'm outgoing, I'm fun. Who are you at your heart? You know, are you a, a, a true person um, where you're uh, intellectual and um, empathetic, caring, understanding? And who are you at your core? I'm a teacher. No, I'm not a teacher. I'm an amazing person. And I could go through and list several things. And that's when you start to get healthy. It's when you start to realize what is so special about you. It's not what I look like. It's not what my body looks like. It's not the length of my hair or the color of my nails. It's who I am inside. We've lost a lot of who we are after the narcissistic abuse, but we can get it back. We need to remind ourselves who we really are to bring that person to the front. It takes effort because our brains are, are still in overdrive. We're still seeking that um, adrenaline rush, uh, the cortisol, the, the feel-good hormones, the oxytocin, and we're sad, but it wasn't a waste. We learned so much about ourselves. We learned that we give our all in relationships. We were just with the wrong person. So I think that's a good thing. But we also have to be careful. not to. We can give our all when it's replaced. We have to match energies. And I keep trying... So I hope you guys get this concept of when we give so much, um, it's an exchange of energy. Just like if I say hi and you don't say anything back to me, you kept my energy. When you say hi back to me, it's an exchange of energy. Neither of us are depleted. <laughs> and our narcissist takes so much from us by the silent treatment because that's us giving energy to talk or are you okay or is there something I can do we don't get the energy back so we're depleted and we got to get that energy built back up because people pick up on the vibes and we have to put forth a positive vibe make it till you make it it will um bring bring it back you know so when you're depressed you got to force yourself to keep doing things and connecting with people because you're bringing your energy back. You're re-stimulating it. Objects in motion stay in motion. Same with your refilling of energy. Sorry, I'm starting to get sick. Um, so we learned things. We met some people. We did some activities during that love bombing stage and maybe a little bit here and there. We realized that we sacrifice a lot we realize that we need to be more protective of ourselves to redirect the way that we talk with the narcissist because we gave them the fuel that they needed to abuse us we explained why and uh so we could say something like um could you pick up the kids because I have to 
uh, go grocery shopping, something like that. Something simple. Could you pick up the kids? Cause I have to go grocery shopping. We gave them because I have to do this and they'll evaluate whether that justifies them having to do anything as opposed to, can you just pick up the kids and have them say yes or no. And, and then you focus on that. You know, if they say that they can't ask them why, whatever, but we give them the fuel when we explain things. If you guys are like me, <laughs> I just got real sick in the last couple of minutes. Um, I'm going to six and it's like two o'clock and it's midnight, but we give them the fuel and we think we're communicating with them. For me, um, I, I've always said, you know, I, I would die for somebody, but I'm not going to just do it. To me, intent, uh, reasoning is important to me. You know, that's just me. That's how I communicate. Um, you know, I try to express things because I'm self-sufficient. I don't like asking for favors. So when I ask for a favor, I kind of explain it. Like, this is why I'm asking for this. Please do this. Uh, in a relationship, it's two people. So one should pick up the burden with the other. And, and in my eyes, I always had to justify it. We do that with our narcissists. They make us feel like we have to justify. I, you know, with my first, um, I was like, you know, can you watch her for a second? Because I'm going to get the mail. We, we always feel like we can't just say, can you just watch her for five seconds? I'll be right back in. We always feel like we have to uh, be so cautious and it's subliminal. It's, it's subconscious. It's subconscious. Sorry for the word. Um, but it wasn't a waste. Because we learned what it's like to love. They say it's better to have loved and lost and never have loved at all. So looking back, you know, I'm 52. And, you know, it, it's hard. But I know I'm a loving person now. And I know I know how to love. I know I know how to communicate. I know that certain people, if you can't, we're, I, I was willing to compromise. I, I realized that, no, I'm not a spoiled brat where everything has to be my way. I've come to these YouTube channels to try to research. We're intelligent people. We've learned that, that we are problem solvers. We're seeking answers that's a high quality to understand yourself understand other people so that just shows what a quality person you are that you're willing to reflect on things a narcissist doesn't do that while we hurt it does hurt we're luckier I want you to soak this in we're luckier that while we hurt, it's a sign that we're able to love, we're able to connect with people. And it, it felt good. The narcissist doesn't connect with people. So while I wish all this shit never happened, it's better than never feeling empathy, never truly connecting with people. And if you're like me, I've realized that I need to spend more time with my friends. I've reconnected with them. I've realized that, you know, no, none of us are perfect. But to take to the time for the people that are trying to invest in us. If a, if a girlfriend, female friend, I'm heterosexual but if a girlfriend calls me that I take the time to answer it you know we all get so caught up in our lives or to even just if you don't answer that call sometimes we need time but to at least get back by text and say you know uh, is everything okay so we can be there for our friends because a lot of our friends have been there for us and we learned who is there for us also be careful not to over uh, utilize our friends because um, 
they have been there for us. And when they're, they've given all the advice that they can give, we're not taking it or we're coming back with but, 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 or what ifs that we have to give them a break too. They're trying to understand us. They don't, unless they've been through narcissistic abuse. And we had our talk with them about our narcissist. We are taking away from our friendship with them. We're putting our burdens on them. So try not to overutilize that part of your friend. Invest in the friendship. Search YouTube for the answers. Search, uh, you know, talk with a therapist. Uh, NAMI has free uh, kind of like coaches um, that'll help you. Uh, there's a lot of free information out there. Ask me any questions you would like to ask. I'll do the research. You don't have to. You can. But I'm also certified to teach psychology. So I have some background uh, in psychology. And also 30 some years. I don't even know. 33 years of narcissistic abuse I've been through. And a lot of insight, especially during the struggle with my second one. That's when things came to light because I was saying all these different things. And when you look at it from a psychological standpoint, everything I said relates to narcissism. I feel like I'm losing myself. Can't you just communicate with me? Uh, we apologize for things. Um, we just want to understand things. So, so you're like calling them. They're not answering. They're ghosting you. And we're telling them everything. And they're just feeding off of it. They see it as a joke sometimes. They're, it's just a different breed. And... It gets confusing because they're pleasurable to be around until things get stressful or in to where you're in a relationship with them. That's when things go to shit. So if it's superficial, sometimes it can seem pleasurable. But when you have to rely on them and you should be able to do that in a husband wife situation, they're not there for you. And it is all about them. My second one said, everybody knows it's all about me. So as I'm doing my YouTube, my psychological studies, I, I see they, they do. They tell you what's, who they are. I don't want to sacrifice. That takes effort. Just the things they say like are mind-blowing. And, and there's times we have thoughts too. Like, I don't want to do it. It takes effort. And, and, and that's when they're truthful. They can be truthful. It comes out in little blurbs and we're like, come on, you're not an asshole. And then we're like, oh, they just basically told us they were. Where we're like, come on, everybody thinks it's about you. You're a little cocky, but okay. They're, they're telling you the truth. So we've learned that we want to get back to being who we are because we miss that part of us. They talk about the mirroring. We fall in love with ourselves. That's a hard concept to uh, understand, but that is what it was. That was us loving and living and expressing ourselves and feeling free and comfortable. We were experiencing us. And then once that exchange took, it, it, it wasn't a, oh, it's so hard. They were mirroring us and we were mirroring them because they were mirroring us. So it's like they mirrored us like the same things we did. It was all bullshit, but they're showing us our mirror. And then we start, you know, going back and forth. When you have two people who are on the same page, you, you, you both mirror each other. And it's safe, but it's like the change happened with the narcissist. And it's like, why did that change? Because it wasn't real. The narcissist learned how to manipulate. I deal with children all day long as a teacher. I see the way they act. I see their coping skills. The ones that were from 
uh, more difficult relationships with their parents or households or trauma. I see the way they react. We had a fire drill. A kid had a panic attack. There are triggers that cause somebody to ra- react certain ways. Just like us, we have our triggers. Our triggers are respect me. Respect me. That was, I don't care what you say to me, but do it in a respectful way. You don't have to hang out with me. Just say no, thank you. If I say hi to you, doesn't mean you have to be my friend. Or if I bump into you and say, excuse me, just at least nod your head. But our narcissist ignores us. And they ignore us sometimes when we're at our lowest point. So we got to take our energy back, rebuild it. You know, they talk about exercising, how you build up your endurance. At first, how many jumping jacks can you do tonight? Well, over time, you could increase that. Or how many miles can you run? Over time, you can increase that. You're building up your energy and endurance. And that's what we have to do emotionally is build our endurance back up. So we learned that there's evil people out there. We've learned that there are red flags. We've learned that we're quality people. We've learned that certain... uh, People have certain triggers and they have to express it. If they don't express it, we'll never know what those triggers are. It could be something so simple. There was one abused child that had um, been adopted and was adopted by loving, loving parents. But the, uh, the mom had like long red nails, just beautiful nails from the, you know, salon. And the kid freaked out. And that's because the mom the biological mom used to torture her and scratch her and, and, and do horrible things with her nails. And it also reminded her of her mother and sometimes just taking off your nails can can change how somebody reacts. So when we're moving forward, we have to really get to know our people and a narcissist will never tell you who they are. So we have to realize moving forward, how much people share with us, how vulnerable they are and do their stories match up over time? Do they tell us that they are scared of heights and then they want to go on this crazy roller coaster? Like, are, are they being honest with us? And we've learned that honesty is important. We've learned how we react to things. Are you angry now? Are you vengeful? And hopefully you're you're true to yourself. I don't believe any of you guys are in your soul. I mean, I don't know you guys, so some of you probably are. Let's be real. Some of you probably are. But on average, I still believe there are a lot of good people. And stay true to yourself. If you're not a vengeful person, let the anger go. Nothing comes good of being vengeful. It's that reactive abuse. So it's kind of like a free ticket, but you, you're you still going to face criminal charges or, or, or shame for, that's not who I am. Why did I do that? And it's not going to bring forth healing. Hurting someone else doesn't help you heal. So karma works its own way out. And sometimes, you know, we're trying to get rid of our, our, our pain. So we're trying to put it on someone else. And I mentioned before, if we can take that pain and put it onto the universe or put it onto our God, that's what it's there for. To release the pain, whatever it is you believe in. I believe in a God. If you guys believe in something else, put it on that. Put it on nature that it'll drift away in the wind or God will take your pain. And lead you down the path you're supposed to go to. But you got to believe it. It's that uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. You can take your life. Based on your attitude. And based on your energy. Because every little piece of energy. Changes the world. 
I give somebody a dirty look, then they're going to be pissed off and they're going to treat somebody rude. That person just got treated rude. So they're going to slam a door and that door is going to break. Now they're pissed off. I mean, it's just on and on and on. So now, you know, the door guy person has to work late and it just, it changes so much. So just put on a smile. It, it's that pay it forward stuff. It, it changes lives. So don't think it was a waste. Think it was a learning opportunity to where you got to know what's really important to you, how you handle things, what your triggers are, what you deserve, and what the red flags are. So big hugs to you guys. Uh, One-on-ones are available. Topic requests are always welcome. And I'll see you in the next video.